بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وبسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والدعاء على الهداء والدلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Pray that you're all well, inshallah ta'ala. Firstly, apologies um, for the cancellation last week. Um, uh, I, was, uh, I was a bit unwell. So, alhamdulillah. Bismillah. So, uh, let's um, start, inshallah ta'ala. Today, we begin our uh, study of the book of the great Imam, rahimahullah ta'ala. Hujjatul Islam, the proof of Islam. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala. And... We start his book, Ayyuhal Walad. Ayyuhal Walad, which has been translated into English as Letter to a Disciple. Letter to a Disciple. Before we start, before we start, just um, we should have the perspective, we should have the perspective that this is not Letter to a Disciple. When I'm reading the book, it's a letter to Asim from Imam Al-Ghazali. Each one of you, if you have a hard copy, by all means, strike out the word disciple and write your name down. This is a letter to you, to me, to all of us from Imam Al-Ghazali. If we read it as it's for some third person, we're not really going to benefit. There's no point. We've, we've been there. Yeah, we sat in the khutbah. And um, you're listening to the Imam and you're nudging the person next to you. Oh, you need to listen to this. <laughs> and in, and and if you listen, you're sat in a lecture. Oh, oh, my, my wife needs to listen to this or my children need to listen to this or someone else needs to listen to this. No, no one else needs to listen to it. First and foremost, like I need to listen. <laughs> yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put me in a place to listen, to listen. Um, to the reminder because I'm the one who needs reminding. I'm the one who needs reminding. Yeah, so it's not about thinking about anyone and everyone else. This is a letter to ask him. It's a letter to each one of you. That's how you read the read it. It's a it's a personal letter to each one of us. Hakada, this is how we read the Quran. The Quran Kitab Rabbi. This is the book of my Lord. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to me. When the Prophet وسلم, says something and he's advising, that advice is not to anyone else, it's to us. It's to us, each and one of us, specifically. So, right, before we read this book, we should read this book. Because this book is, was, is, is and always was meant for me. So, inshallah ta'ala, with that perspective, let's, let us begin. Bithnillahi ta'ala. Bismillah, Muhammad, can you just read the first page, please? So the way we'll do it is we'll read, inshallah ta'ala, we'll read, um, we'll read hopefully page by page. And um, then um, either I may ask a few questions to get some discussion going, or we may talk about a few things. Not, not, um, but regardless, um, highly encouraged for everyone to join in the discussion and share your thoughts. Um, and ask questions, um, ask questions, inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah, Muhammad. Um, slightly on the lower side, but it's okay. In the name of God. Is that better? Okay, Bismillah, go ahead. In the name of God, the infinitely good. Praise belongs to God. And the outcome belongs to the God consciousness. So, sorry, your voice is breaking up. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll read the, the paragraph again, inshallah. Okay, um, Mr. In the name of God, the infinitely good, 
the merciful. Praise belongs to God, the world, the Lord of the worlds, and the outcome belongs to the God conscious. And blessings and peace be upon his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his family. Know that one of the advanced students devoted himself to the service of the master, the imam, the ornament of religion and proof of Islam, Abu Hamid ibn Muhammad al-Ghazali, may God sanctify his spirit, and occupied himself with the acquisition and study of knowledge under him, until he mastered the details of the sciences and filled out the good qualities of the soul. Then one day he considered his situation, and it occurred to him, I have studied various kinds of science, and I have spent my life learning and mastering them. I now ought to find out which kind will be of use to me on the morrow, to keep me company in my grave, and those which are not of use to me, so that I may give them up. As God's Messenger وسلم, said, O God, I take refuge in Thee from knowledge which is not useful. This thought persisted to the point that he wrote to the Honorable Master, the proof of, Is the proof of Islam, Muhammad al-Ghazali, may God the Exalted be merciful to him, seeking a ruling asking questions and requesting both advice and a prayer. Even though the works of the master, such as the revival of the religious sciences, Ihya Ulumuddin, and others contain the answers to my questions, what I want is for the master to write down what I need in a few pages to be with me for the rest of my life and I will act in accordance with what is in them during my term, if God the Exalted wills. So the Master wrote him this message in reply, and God knows best. Jazakallah <laughs> khairan. So whenever, whenever, um, let alone a book, let alone a book, whenever any Muslim starts any act, any, any act any act by which he intends Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no doubt by every act the Muslim must intend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala otherwise that act is pointless in and of itself what is the point um, <clears throat> that, that act would be just dust scattered in the wind and when a Muslim begins an act as such intending the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he invokes the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that or upon which the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not mentioned is cut off. It's cut off from all goodness, from all blessing, and it's something which is not raised unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is devoid of blessing. So no doubt you'll see in every book um, that you study um, of the religion begins with the author invoking the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is called, so in the khitab, in the opening khitab, in the muqaddimah, you have that which is called the basmala, which is in work, beginning in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And invoking the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Through his names, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides us unto all good. And if not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would never have been guided. We would never have been guided. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord of the worlds. And the outcome belongs to the God conscious. lil muttaqin, And the end affair and success. And the, and the final success, the eternal success, is to those who are God conscious. And within the opening khitab, usually the author alludes to alludes to the content of the book herein indicating that this is a book about becoming conscious of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are people who are focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focused on attaining his pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala and blessings and peace be upon his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family 
And these, invoking the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these are, the, these are the two by which you begin any act which is good by invoking the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending prayers upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <laughs> because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is, he is the path unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no, there is no way for us to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If, if anyone were to claim otherwise, then they would claim, then the claim is essentially a claim of disbelief to claim that I don't need the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by myself. <laughs> How is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the entirety of creation through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that some and that someone from the creation to claim we can get to the to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the key to all goodness uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is through him that we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with that we begin. So you have the basmala, the hamdala. So the basmala is invoking the name, beginning in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hamdala is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or um and and then the salawat, the salah al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how you begin. This is how you begin. Um any admonition, any any admonition, any reminder, any book, this is how you start. Because this is the source of all blessings. This is what unlocks and brings uh, blessings into that which you embark upon. And with regards to this student, this student, it is said here, it is said here, he's one of the advanced students of Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala. And, um, and he was one of his disciples who who was not just on and off. He was there with him for a prolonged duration until he mastered the details of the sciences and filled out the good qualities of the soul. So he mastered the outer sciences, the sciences of the outward and the sciences of the inward. So he is one of those who actually um, took knowledge in its proper manner. He did not neglect the outward for the inward, nor did he neglect the inward. Um, the uh, outward, the inward for the outward. He took both as they should be. Like Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, um, the man tafaq, uh, man tafaqaha wa lam yatasawwaf faqad uh, tazandaq. So the one, tafassaq, faqad tafassaq. The one who takes outward knowledge but does not purify himself, i.e. deal with his inner state, he will end up corrupt completely inside. He'll be completely corrupt because everything has taken is just all outward. And the one who just takes to the inward and neglects the outward, that which is obligatory upon him to know about the outward, this person will end up a heretic, a heretic. And and you have pe and and those who combine the do two, these are the people who who actually reach, who are successful, who reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how few are those in the time that we live in? And how many are those who are enamored by the outward, such that they neglect their inward? And how many of those who claim to be people of the inward and do all sorts of things? <laughs> so we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to combine the outward and the inward in a manner which pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point here, the point here is this student has done that, has done that, yeah? He's mastered the outward sciences and also the, has pulled out the good qualities of his soul. And then he realizes, and then he realizes, I've taken, I've taken on so much, yeah? I've spent my life learning and mastering these different sciences and now need to find out what is going to be beneficial for me in my grave. Yeah, and that which is not beneficial for me so that I may give them up. And this is one of the principal aspects of the religion. Imam 
uh, al Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala includes this in the 40 hadith, in the 40 hadith, which are, which are the essential cornerstones of this religion. Min husni islam, min husni islam al mar'i tarkuhu malayani. From the beauty of one's Islam, from the beauty of one's religion, is leaving that which does not concern them. The Prophet said, This is essential in our religion that you do not you do not involve yourself in that which does not concern you. And and Imam Al Ghazali quotes the dua of the Prophet, even though he quotes only part of the dua. In the part of the dua he goes, says, Oh God, I take refuge in you from knowledge which is not useful. The the complete dua being Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa'. I seek refuge in you from knowledge that does not benefit. Wa qalbin la yakshah and a heart that is not afraid of you. Wa amalin la yurfa and an action which is not raised with you. Wa du'a'in la yusma and a prayer which is not answered by you. I seek refuge in you from these things. That the Prophet وسلم, would take refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these things. The first of which, knowledge which is of no benefit. Knowledge which is of no benefit. So the question now, the question now, which I'd like to ask for us to think about, is all of knowledge of religion. We'll, first, we'll just talk about religion before opening it up further. Is all knowledge of religion beneficial at a personal level and leading on from that how does one attain greatness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is it by seeking out this knowledge as much knowledge as one can gain is that the way to greatness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these two questions I'd like us to kind of talk, uh, discuss a bit before we move on. So the first one is all of knowledge beneficial at a personal level for each and every per each and every single person. And is the way to seek greatness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek as much knowledge as one can. Yes, please. So, so geez, just, just on your questions, yeah, I think there's obviously there's no short answer, I think. Um, but it feels like that knowledge on its own. You know, it, it could be beneficial or it could be not beneficial, could be detrimental, depending on what intention is accompanied with that knowledge. Correct. Correct. You know, if, if it's if it's good knowledge with the intention of, you know, becoming close to Allah or put, implementing it for the betterment of the deen or the community, then that knowledge could be beneficial. You know, or, or the same knowledge can be detrimental if you're doing it for, you, you know, to feel like, you're better than other people, you know, if it leads to arrogance, for example. Correct, correct, excellent. And uh, thoughts on the second question? Yeah. Um, sorry, can you repeat the second question? Is is the way to greatness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain as much as as much knowledge as one can? No, I think action needs to be followed with the knowledge. So, you know, gain the knowledge, but knowledge without implementing it, embodying it, acting upon it is almost like a burden upon you, you know? You might you might be asked about that Allah gave you the opportunity to learn that knowledge. Yeah. You learned it, but didn't act upon it. I think with learning knowledge comes a certain responsibility that you have to embody what you've been, what you've learned. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan. Very good. Um, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll ask you a few questions as well. <laughs> so first one is, um, who is the greatest of the companions? Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Yeah. But he was not. How many hadith does he relate? Barely a handful. Barely a handful. 
Um, and he was not even one of the people who the Prophet وسلم, in his time appointed as people to issue legal verdicts, fatawa. He was not. There were others. There were others who were appointed, not Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Who is greater, Musa alayhi salam or Khidr alayhi salam? Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam. Yeah. Even though Khidr alayhi salam had knowledge, which Musa alayhi salam didn't. Yeah. Who's the greatest from the Tabi'in? From the comp from the generation after the companions. After the name is uh, yeah, so the, from the generation after the companions, it's generally regarded that it is always al Qarni He was not a scholar. Yeah, he was prevented from meeting the Prophet because he was in the service of his mother. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Umar radiallahu and Ali radiallahu anhu. Possibly unparalleled with regards to knowledge. Like if there's any, like that, <laughs> yeah. And go tells them to go go seek dua from him. Get get the dua from Sayyidina Uwais al-Qarni. Not to say that he's he's greater than them, no doubt. That's not the case. But to show that, show his greatness, Sayyidina Uwais. <clears throat> Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He's not someone who necessarily um, is associated with outward knowledge. But what did the Prophet وسلم, say about Abu Bakr? If his faith were placed on one side of the scale and the rest of the Ummah, everyone else, <laughs> Sayyidina Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu anhu, everyone else, on the other side, his faith would outweigh them. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, was a man of action. He was a man of action. And he was a man of in, intense faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, everyone I invited to Islam, everyone hesitated except Abu Bakr. They come, they come to him, Abu Bakr radiallahu and the Prophet ﷺ says he's been on Isra al Mi'raj, he's been to Jerusalem, he's gone to the high heavens. He comes to, and they say, oh, you're, you're, they come to Abu Bakr radiallahu oh, you see what your companion is saying now, saying the Prophet ﷺ is claiming all sorts of these things which are like, we, we find it hard to believe. And it's like, in all, faqad sadaq. If he said he, he's, he's truthful, there's no doubt about that. Uh, so, said that at least seven to eight times in his life, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al gave up everything, everything in his life, everything he had for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for lillahi wa li rasuli. Like, whenever they had to uh, set out on a military expedition and they needed funds to raise the army, to defend the Muslims, and the Prophet ﷺ would call forth for uh, any people to bring forth whatever they had. And and when when Abu Bakr comes, he's like, "So what have you left?" So first Umar comes, and he's like, "Oh, today I'm going to outdo Abu Bakr and and so he brings what whatever he could bring, and he gives to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ says, "Like, um, have you left anything for your family?" And he said, yeah, I've left for them the like of this. Yeah, I have left for them the like of this. I.e., this is half of everything I have. Yeah, I've left half of it for my family and this is the rest. So, and, and, and all of the other things, yeah, khalas, and today, today, I'll, I'll outdo Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu brings whatever he had and he gives. And he gives to the Prophet sallallahu And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked, like, what have you left? What have you left? My family, he says, I've left for my family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't need anything else. He was a man of action. He was a man of action and he was a man of intense faith to the extent that when they prayed without Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa made them repeat their prayer. Their prayer is invalid except behind Abu Bakr. <laughs> And he, he was, why, 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 what is it about Abu Bakr? A Siddiq, man of Siddiq. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah. Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and kunu ma sadiqeen. 
be with the truthful people. He didn't say be with the ulama. Because ulama can be from the Siddiqeen, no doubt. Inshallah, we pray that they are. Most of them, or all of them are, inshallah ta'ala. But that's not the criteria. The criteria is Siddiq, is truthfulness. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, talks about the people who are successful. أُولَيْكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ The Prophets, Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, the next, the next degree, the people who are people of sincerity, truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالشُّهَدَاء, those who are truthful in giving up themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, والصالحين, the righteous people of righteous actions. Righteous, not just in the eyes of people, the, the actions which are accepted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nothing is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that which is entirely and completely just for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ The only people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from is from the people of taqwa, those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not of anyone else. This is the rank of truthfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we need knowledge, no doubt. Need knowledge, no doubt. But like Brother Mubarak said, knowledge in and of itself, like Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, knowledge of the tongue, i.e. knowledge that is taken, like you read, you learn, you study, that is the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the son of Adam. Because Yawm al-Qiyamah, that, that person who took knowledge cannot claim, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. He can't. This knowledge which he has taken is, is the proof against him. You, you've taken it, you know. You can't say, I don't know. Yeah? I, that's one type of knowledge. There's another type of knowledge. The other type of knowledge is that which seats itself inside one's heart and enlightens his soul and 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 guides him unto that which is good in this world and the hereafter. I eat this knowledge which was taken by the tongue on the tongue, if it's not transformed and placed inside the heart and thereby transforms the heart, that's just proof. It, literally, it is playing with the fire. In other words, it's literally playing with the fire. This knowledge which is taken from books, this knowledge is taken. Oh, I know this, I know that. Oh, I've studied this, I've studied that. Yeah. No, yeah, that's that's just proof against, not proof for. And and the and the and the real people of knowledge, they knew this. They knew this. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. He was he was unparalleled in his time. He was unparalleled in his time. Yeah. And Imam Darul Hijrah. He used to go and sit at the feet of Muhammad al Munkadir, from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not known to be like a scholar. He knew enough to, um, um, uh, enough such that he could fulfill his obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the people around, whatever was obligated for him. And Imam Malik would say that we know of people, we know of people who, when they raise their hands, we need rain, we, we need rain, we go to them, tell them to make dua, they make dua and rain descends. But they are not people who we take knowledge from. They, in, i.e. They, they do not have enough outward knowledge to give to others. But they have enough knowledge, they have enough knowledge for them to fulfill their obligations. And their inward knowledge they are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have, they have achieved a rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says this in a hadith. Rubba ash'atin akhbar madfoon bil abwaab. Dhe tamrain madfoon bil abwaab law aqsama billah la abarrah. How many uh, a ragged, disheveled man, like a beggar, like a beggar, like his lips like wrinkled, like raisins, like completely, like completely um, 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 a, a figure which no one would find pleasing. 
madfoon bil abwaab like someone who is who is shooed away from doors no one wants them and no one would give their daughter in marriage to them but if they raise their hand if they if they swore by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill their pledge and fulfill their promise this is greatness with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala greatness with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like learning outward knowledge outward knowledge is the easiest way is the easiest way to gain greatness in the eyes of people learning outward knowledge especially like not especially knowledge that is beyond that which is personally obligatory obviously knowledge that is just personally obligatory everyone needs to learn everyone needs to learn no one has excuse in that regard that which is beyond fard ain what is known as fard ain this is is the easiest way to to see greatness in the eyes of people and this is one of the ways in which the shaitan tricks all of us like those of us those of us who may not necessarily be academically inclined the shaitan tricks us oh you can never really you can you can never really reach the high ranks um um of the muttaqin with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are not academically inclined you need to you need to know so much in order to achieve greatness with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so firstly he breaks he he breaks the the aspirations of us like normal people like us he breaks our aspirations says that we don't we are not even we we, we don't even entertain the thought like like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for jannah don't just ask for jannah ask for firdaus the highest level and if you want to ask for the highest level then that means we need to aspire to live the life of the people of firdaus in this world if we want to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for firdaus in the akhirah firstly the shaitan deceives us saying oh you cannot really achieve greatness so in order to achieve greatness you need to know this you need to know that or and and those who are academically inclined he tricks them by thinking oh you have achieved greatness look you are you are better than all these people you know you've studied this you've studied that or oh, you've done this you're the no they, they don't even know the basics this is from the this is from the shaitan he gets us good he gets us good so knowledge knowledge any knowledge which you take if you do not feel that this is going to benefit me in my grave it's like what's the point if this is not going to benefit me in my afterlife how is this going to help any anything that you take with the religion you should see you should be able to see how is this benefiting me why am i doing this otherwise yeah and 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 this is unfortunately this is how this is how we all get duped we all get duped um and knowledge yeah so yeah bismillah let's hear from someone else some thoughts bismillah sorry i can't hear you muhammad where this where this have, have sorry achieved uh, is uh, the 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 come again um uh, an, advanced an advanced stage, stage in their studies, their studies they mm-hmm. still had they still had other other to to sorry your voice is breaking up i can't i can't make out um, the entirety of what you're trying to say um hang on so you know what? I, I'll, i'll come back i'll try to change the internet setting and then i'll i'll no this is fine now now what you said i could catch all of it go again go again Oh, okay. I was I was going to say there are two things from reading this paragraph that that stood out to me. The first one was the adab of the student, 
where yeah. um, um, despite having reached an advanced stage in their studies, um, mm -hmm. they still had high regards uh, for their teacher. And um, um, a very long time ago, I, I heard Sheikh Haroon mention something which um, which I try to remind myself each time I sit in front of a teacher where Sheikh Haroon used to make a dua that um, Allah increase my teacher in knowledge and wisdom so that he may benefit us. And I think this is fundamental because um, very often when we're taking knowledge um, mm. by reminding ourselves of this, it's to remind that this knowledge is to benefit oneself, especially to benefit oneself in the hereafter. Um, whereas um, very often we can be tricked into thinking that this knowledge is to be gained so that people see us as having this knowledge and therefore the intention is is contaminated. Um, yes, uh, no doubt. That was the first one. And the second point was, um, well, I forgot what the second point was. Anyway, I'll come back. <laughs> okay, that's good. And and the thing with knowledge is, there's that which is in, that which is which benefits the community, but it might at the same time be harmful to you to the person themselves. Like for example, like it's definitely beneficial for the community for there to be people who give reminders. Like, like, OK, for example, the Jumu'ah Khutbah, the Khatib, he climbs up the member and he's there admonishing the people. The entire mosque is filled out with thousands of people and he stood there, he's admonishing people. Thus, there's benefit in that for the community because we are all reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all reminded of the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah ta'ala, which helps us to improve ourselves. So there's definitely benefit in that for the community. But at the same time, there is, if the khatib does not recognize that there is harm in it for him personally, that he can easily fall into arrogance. Oh, I'm looking at, I'm stand on top of these people and I'm admonishing them. See, I'm telling them X, Y, and Z. If, he, if the khatib does not recognize that he himself personally is at peril, even though there is benefit in what he's doing for the community. The person who who recites the Quran beautifully or the person who recites uh, Nasheed Nasheed beautifully in front of people and the people are clearly affected by what he is doing or he or she is doing. Needs to watch himself or herself. He needs to watch himself or himself, their intentions and their uh, and how their heart sways when they see how they affect people. There are things which benefit the community, but at the same time, if you're not careful about yourself, you are at personal peril now. And, and that's why Imam Ghazali, he says later on in the book, <laughs> stay away from becoming a teacher. Never become a teacher. <laughs> like as much as you can avoid it. Because even though there is benefit at, at the communal level and possibly the highest level of benefit, it's at great risk. It's at great risk to the person themselves. So, inshallah ta'ala, by studying this book, we become more aware of ourselves. And this is why this is critical with regards to how we try to shape our children as well. We try, to, unfortunately, a lot of us, we try to shape our children on the outward of Islam. On the outward of Islam. We want them to learn these things, learn X, Y, Z. They should know this, they should know that. That, Allahu Alam, it doesn't see, it would seem to be very counterproductive to, up, to take such an approach. Why? Because you're focusing on the outward. You're focusing on the outward. You're focusing on the outward without really, without really, having a chance for them to um, to strengthen their inward. Like Islam, as it began, as it began, for the first 13 years in Mecca, there was barely any rules. It was all about faith. Prayer, there was prayer halfway through, halfway through, close to halfway through. There was no fasting, there was no, nothing. There was no fasting, hajj, zakat. It was just prayer, that's all. 
and that too after the Isra al Mi'raj. And Sayyidatna Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, if all these rules which we received in Medina, if we received them in Mecca, we would have just left the full, left the religion. We would have left the religion. Why? Because forcing the outward when the inward is rebellious. What else do you accept? Expect? What else? Let the outward should flow from the inward. That's what Imam Al Haddad says. Like the outward should flow from that which is inward. If it's just outward, then what's there? What well, I'm doing this because my parents are telling me. So it was not for the sake of Allah to begin with. What was the point? So, inshallah ta'ala. So knowledge is essential. But at the same time, like Sheikh Ibrahim says, it's poisonous. It's poisonous, and you should know, you should know how to deal with it, how to deal with knowledge. But at the same time, there is a base which all of us need, which none of us are excused from. And once you have that base, that which you are required to know at a personal level, so that with regards to your beliefs, with regards to that which you do, your practices, your your worship, and your transactions with people. Once you know that. There is no hindrance with regards to knowledge. As, as far as knowledge goes, with regards to achieving greatness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we didn't take anything else from today's session, this is one thing we need to take. That there is, like once you know your fardain, that which is essential for a person to know, all that is now left is for you to implement that which you know, to achieve greatness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Greatness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in knowing so many books. It's not. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal and Yahya ibn Ma'in, his compatriot, they were like the greatest muhaddiths of their time, greatest muhaddith. They would go and sit in the presence repeatedly. They'd go and sit in the presence of Ma'ruf al-Qarhi, rahimahullah ta'ala, who was a known saint. He was a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, he was not at the level of knowledge as Imam Ahmed and Imam Yahya. Like Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, he would go and sit in the presence of Shaybana Ra'i, the shepherd. Why? Why? Because they realize that it's ultimately, it's about the inward. It's about the inward. Not for anyone who, ha who has knowledge to think, oh, oh, see that person, he doesn't know anything. No. Imam Ali, rahimahullah, uh, radiallahu anhu, he is asked by one of his sons not um, Sayyidina Hussain Hassan, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, but by one of his other sons, like who, who was the best of people after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who was the best of people? So answer Sayyidina Ali Radiallahu Anhu, Abu Bakr. And who after him? Who after him? He says Umar. And then he says, um, the son, he says, I was afraid that he would say Uthman if I asked who after that. So I said, is, and after them, is it you? And he said, no, me, I'm just a man from amongst the people. I'm just a man, and I'm, Rajul min al Muslimin. I'm just one of the people, that's all, I'm from the common people. He does not negate the knowledge, he knows his, not, his level in knowledge, that possibly very, one could possibly make the case that he was the most knowledgeable of the companions. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself said, Ana madinatul ilm wa ali babuha. I am the citadel of knowledge. I'm the citadel of knowledge. And Ali, he is he is the gateway to that citadel. And Ali he is reported to have said, there is not an ayah in the Quran except that I know it. Except that I know its meaning. And except that I know when it was revealed and accept that I know where it was revealed. Now he know, he's, he's a person of immense knowledge. He's a person of immense knowledge, but at the same time, how does he make the statement that I'm just one from amongst the people? There is no, like, you can, like there's no false humility. He should, if, he, if he didn't believe it, he wouldn't say it. 
because if he didn't believe it and he said it, it's a lie. He believed it, no doubt. That's what made him great. But why did he believe it? Because he knows it's all out to acknowledge. It's all out to acknowledge. It is where it is possible. It is possible that someone could have from the inward that which he, in theory, he he may not have in theory, but we know that's not the case. But that's how that's how he achieved achieved his greatness. Like uh, the teacher of our teachers, Habib Umar, Hafizahullah Taala, he's asked, "How how is it that you have this effect you have on your students? How is it?" And he said, "I do not teach my students except that I believe from them are those who will intercede for me Yom Al Qiyamah." And if I believe that I'm better than them, I would shut down Dar al-Mustafa. I would shut down Dar al-Mustafa. How is it that he knows? He knows his rank and knowledge. There are possibly very few people who could even be mentioned in the same level, just, just with regards to the level of his outward knowledge, knowledge of the outward. So how, 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 how does he believe this? Why? Because he knows. It's not about the outward knowledge. Your rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give that to any of his slaves he wishes, any of the slaves who wishes to ex expend themselves. They may not necessarily need to be academically inclined. That is required for people to become great in the eyes of other people. Yeah? Like Islam is not like, it's like, like it's, it's not like an elitist, um, it's not, it's not elitist in any way. So it's like the highest levels of Jannah are for the uh, for the geeks and the nerds. It's, it's like uh, it's like Harvard and Yale. No, it's not like that. It's it's completely not like that. Like they say, like the in the beyond Tareem, like there's a man. People just go to him just to ask him for dua, and his duas are answered. And he was asked, like, how is it? How how have you how have you reached this state? And he says, I'm I'm just I'm just like a normal person. I'm, there's nothing special about me. I don't know a lot as well, except that for 40 years I worked as a painter, as a decorator, and anything and everything that I had. After I've I've uh, uh, I've uh, met the needs of my family, I would just give it away in charity. That's all it did. That does not require outward knowledge. That requires Sidq Allah Ta'ala. Sincerity with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So we can talk and talk and talk. In reality, we already know what we need to achieve greatness with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala expects that of us to achieve greatness with Him Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for his slave whenever he does something that he excels in what he does. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this life for us to excel in it. And not in the eyes of others. In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many a person excels in the eyes of others, does not excel in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many a person excels in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but no one recognizes that from him. Ali radiallahu anhu said, Anonymity is a blessing no one wants, everyone shuns. And fame is a curse everyone desires. So the, the key thing we need to take from today's session is that as long as you have learned what you need to learn now, like your Farda Ayn, and if you have not, khair inshallah ta'ala, there's good opportunities like the Micro Madrasa program with our teachers in Liverpool and Bradford, is I is possibly one of the best ways in which you can um, learn that which you need to learn from real people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From real people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. After that, like this, they say, this, what do they say? The world is your oyster, isn't it? Then the, the akhirat is your oyster. You know what you need to do. Like that which you need, knowledge-wise, you have it's now just a case of now just like walking the talk just doing what needs to be done and everyone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for each one that which 
kullun muyassarun lima khuliqa lah allah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates for each person that which they have been created for and that is the key we need to understand what we have been created for we need to know why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want of us yeah because that's what they say man arafa nafsa arafa rabba the one who knows himself is the one who knows his lord you cannot know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by really knowing yourself and that is the key so that is the point of knowledge the real knowledge is that which makes it clear to you who you are and what you're supposed to be doing and no doubt all of us have a purpose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never does anything without purpose. All of us have a purpose in life. A purpose in life through which we can attain, which we will, inshallah ta'ala, attain greatness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should have the himma of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. So it is reported that he said, I do not wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken my life as a child, had taken my life as a child, such that I would enter Jannah without reckoning. I want to have lived a full and complete life in, in in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in trying to gain his pleasure, such that yawm al-qiyamah, insha'Allah ta'ala, that Allah has, has manifest in my life deeds and actions that have beloved, uh, that uh, that procure his pleasure. That's his himma. I do not wish to go like just as, like die as a child and just and get a free pass to Jannah. No, that's, that, I don't, I don't wish that. No, I, wa I want, I want, I want to make good of this life. That's his himma. And we should all have that himma. We should all have that himma that we should have, that drive. This, this is the only thing we have in reality. Yeah, of all our existence in eternality, this is the only bit where we quote unquote have some, le some semblance of ability to do something. Yeah. Once we die, it's all gone. It's, it's done. There's there's nothing more to do. So we must have that himma of Ali radiallahu anhu. I want to make it count. Yeah. Bismillah. And what does he do? Does he now resort to his own? Oh, I, I'm I'm such an advanced student, so I don't uh, I can figure it out for myself. No. What does he do? He does what Allah subhanahu wa taala tells him. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. The real people of knowledge. For whom knowledge is just not on the tongue, it's in their heart. It illuminates their heart, such that it illuminates their very being, and they illuminate the lives of the people around them. These are the real people of knowledge. Not people who can quote texts left, right, and center, but that knowledge does not transform into their, that, that does not permeate their soul. And you can find examples, you can find examples, you can find people, quote unquote, who have learned, say, for example, Aqeedah, have learned Aqeedah to a very high level, very high level, yeah, and they've learned it very well, they've learned it very well, yeah, they'll, they'll be able to, they'll be able to explain all the fine points and say how someone went wrong and how, what, what's, um, uh, what's the correct uh, position on such and such issue and but if you look them if you look into their lives they get flustered on the smallest things the smallest thing which seemingly goes wrong in their life they're so flustered you've learned a lot of aqidah but your iman is was very weak there is no reality to this knowledge which you have taken even though outwardly you're very competent in the knowledge you have taken there's no reality to your knowledge how is it that you're so strong in your theoretical understanding of Aqeedah, but that does not transfer, that does not uh, inform your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khalas, everything is good. It's okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like every knowledge has an outward, an outward element and an inward reality. Like, one can take whatever they can take from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, know about him, learn about him, but at the same time, if you're abusing your family at home, it's like, well, what, have, what do you really know about the Prophet You can, you, I, you, I, I could give the most beautiful reminders. 
but and and, and I'm abusing my family. It's like there's no reality to 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 words like Snarbasi said. This is this is all that which you say is proof against you. The Prophet said, "Ruba talin yalanuhul Quran." How many a person recites the Quran and the Quran curses him and he is not aware of what is what he's reciting and how the Quran is cursing him as he reads it. There's an outward aspect of knowledge, but without the inward aspect, there's no point. There's no point. Any questions? Any thoughts? And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Khairukum. The best of you are those who are best to your spouses. Why? Because we can pretend to the world. We can pretend anything we want to the world. They know our reality. <laughs> and that's why I teach us say, like, if you really want if if you really want to know how a person is, then the person to ask is not his friends, his his wife. <laughs> because she knows the reality of the affair. Like we can pretend what we want, we can pretend in front of others what we want, but the reality of the affair is, is that which is at home. So, inshallah ta'ala. Any thoughts, any comments? Yes, please, yeah. Yeah, um, my brother was just reminding me uh, the other day of a story of um, after the Prophet وسلم, had passed away, um, there was a man who, um, there was a blind man that he used to feed and uh, one of the companions went to go and think, okay, I'll, I'll maintain what the Prophet وسلم, did before and um, he went to go and feed the blind man um, and the blind man said, you're not the man who usually comes, where is he? And the the prophet the, the companion was was taken aback. Firstly, the prophet وسلم, never even identified himself, and then secondly, how can the man tell if he's blind that I'm not the same person? And he said, the man who used to come before, he used to make it in smaller pieces for me to eat. So, um, <laughs> you know, just knowing something that someone used to do before, or knowing what's good to do, you know, it's not knowing, it's not being the pinnacle of of, of excellence. So it just reminded me of what my brother was telling me the other day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the heaviest thing on uh, on uh, the scales of al Qiyamah is good character, is being good to one another, and uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not maintaining false niceties. Oh, well, I have to be good to them, oh, I couldn't be bothered dealing with them. Yeah, that's 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 not that's uh, that, yeah, that's not that's not character. Yeah, um, so he goes to Imam al-Ghazali, um, rahimahullah ta'ala, um, asking him for advice, asking him for advice. And this is something which is lost, which is lost in today's day and age. Like, we, we are very wary of seeking advice because we are embarrassed, we are ashamed. We are ashamed and many are often, many a times embarrassed to seek advice. We are embarrassed to seek advice, um, and and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put into our lives people who we could seek that advice from, sound advice from, and many a times we leave it until it's too late, or it's almost too late. Yeah, and he says um, even though the Ihya Ulum Din contains that which I need with the Ihya Ulum Din. Is the one of the master, the, if if not the masterpiece of Imam Al Ghazali, forty volumes in which he encapsulates everything, everything that we need, um, a Muslim needs in their life, with regards to, um, and covering every single aspect of life basically, um, and they say that the people who do. Uh, Khatam after Khatam of Ihya Ulumuddin, the same way we do Khatam after Khatam of the Quran, they also study Ihya 
once they finish their study of Ihya once, they start again. They start again and study again. Ihya is one of those books. Um, um, and but what does the student say? I want something which is brief and concise. There is there is no, no tremendous benefit in that which is detailed uh, <coughs> and uh, comprehensive. But at the same time, there is also tremendous benefit in that which is concise and to the point. <coughs> and that's what the student is seeking. That is what we seek to benefit from, inshallah ta'ala. And this is what is the reply of Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala. Bismillah, Muhammad. I've changed microphone. Is that a bit better? <laughs> no, O beloved and precious disciple, may God prolong your days in obedience to him and travel with you on the path of those he loves. That public advice should be quoted from the gold mine of messengerhood, the prophet. If you have received advice from him, what need do you have of my advice? And if you have not received it, then tell me what you have achieved in these years gone by. O disciple, included in what God's messenger وسلم, advised his community is his statement, an indication of the withdrawal of God the exalted from the worshipper is his busying himself with what does not concern him. And if an hour of a man's life slips by in other than that for which he was created in the way of worship, then it is proper that his affliction be protracted. Whoever passes forty without his virtue overpowering his vice, let him get ready for hellfire. This advice contains enough for people of knowledge. Jazakallah khairan. So how does so how does Imam Ghazali begin his advice? He begins with lutf, with gentleness, with kindness. Yeah. Oh my beloved and precious disciple. So the first dua, may God prolong your days in obedience to him and travel with you on the path of those he loves. So this is from the guidance of the Prophet وسلم, that he instructed us that we should desire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us long lives filled with obedience, filled with his obedience subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we should desire that we live long lives and we full of obedience, full of obedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the instruction of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for, for, to what end? So that he takes us down the path of those he loves. So that we attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves the public advice should be quoted from the gold mine of the of messengerhood of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the, what is prudent and what is um, um, what is best is that gentle advice is that one is instructed to that which is from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If such a, if a person has a specific situation where they need specific guidance on um, in their circumstance, then that is on a case to case basis. Yeah, wherein you seek a specific fatwa uh, as relates to your circumstance, which again no doubt goes back to um, the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But this is more so just. Uh, that reminders should be first and foremost from Nubuwa. What is Nubuwa? Nubuwa prophecy is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And what, what does Imam Ghazali say? 
if you have received your advice from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what advice do you need from me? <laughs> what am I going to give you? <laughs> what am I going to give you? Which is going to even compare in what you have received from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you have not received it, then what were you doing all these years when you were studying? Yeah? It's um, what what this reminds what this reminds me is of um, like people they love um, to get like final words of advice from their shiuch, if especially if there's going to be a separation of some sort, if the student is traveling back or the sheikh is traveling back, like what's your like give me your advice. <laughs> Sheikh Ibrahim, Sheikh Ibrahim said this like when he was leaving from Tarim, it's like, it's like, um, I was, the, like, like people were asking him, like we, we have, we are blessed to have an etikaf with uh, Sheikh Ibrahim a few years ago in Warrington and, uh, and towards the end people were asking him for advice and he's like, the last thing on my mind when I was leaving from Tarim was advice, it's like, I, he's, my teachers already gave me so much I don't think I can cope with already everything that I've taken already. Let's not ask for something more. <laughs> so he said, everything that you have taken on this at the calf is is your advice. Like, what more do you want? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what Imam Ghazali is saying. So all these years you are studying, all these years that you are taking knowledge that um, to to benefit yourself in this world and in the next, more importantly, that is the advice. Yeah, you don't need you don't you, like it's almost like you're waiting to hear like a magic word which is going to just change you. <laughs> like, like yes, that can happen, but the reality is, everything that you have taken is the advice. That, that is the advice. Yeah, and then he goes on. He goes on um, quoting as he said is that advice should be from prophecy, from Nabuwa. And he quotes the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu An indication of the withdrawal of God, the exalted from the worshipper, is in his busying himself with that which does not concern him. So what's the first advice which Imam Ghazali gives this student, which in reality, like we said, is giving us What's the first advice? It's like, don't con do, do, do not busy yourself in that which does not concern you. That's the first advice. If we did that, we'd cut out a lot of things from our life. If we just did that, we'd have a lot of time in our hands. Yeah, that we do not, we do not concern ourselves with that which does not, it does not concern us. Yeah. And what, and, and he carries on in the hadith. If an hour of a man's life slips by in other than that which he was created for in the way of worship, then it is proper that his affliction be protracted, i.e. that he should carry on in the state of heedlessness. Because heedlessness only gives, uh, only um, begets more heedlessness. Heedlessness does not beget guidance. Yeah, so if one were to be heedless, no doubt he would carry on being in the state of heedlessness unless something changes. Yeah, and what does he say? Whoever passes 40 without his virtue or powering his wise, let him get ready for hellfire. I.e., many a person, many a person falls into this trap of the shaitan. Oh, when I get older, I'll be righteous. When I get older, I'll do all the right, right things. No, no. Why? Why 40? Because 40 is the age. 40 is, like Islamically speaking, until 40, you're young. Yeah? Until you hit 40, you're still young. And one of the people shaded, one of the people shaded um, on the day when there is no shade, um, Yom Al Qiyamah, is. Shabu Nasha Allah is a young person who grew up in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Young meaning less than 40. Why? Why? Because a person who leaves it, who the shaitan tricks into, okay, you can be good later. 
he is now using his life. He is he is now habituated upon disobedience. This person he is habituated upon disobedience, and in the state he is in, he is not really bothered about changing his state. Disobedience in and of itself is not the issue. The issue is that the person has in some way comes to terms with his disobedience. He's kind of OK with it because in his mind he's going to do something about it at a later stage, which Allah when it comes, whether it comes and what is his going to his state going to be then? So his so what is Imam Ghazali saying with by quoting the hadith of this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Firstly, do not concern yourself with that which does not concern you. First one. Yeah. Second one, think, rectify yourself now. Do not think you'll rectify yourself later. Oh, I just need to do this thing, you know, and then I'll be okay. I'll be good. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And he says, this itself is enough. This advice is enough. This hadith is enough. That do not concern yourself with that which does not concern you and and worry about yourself now. Don't think that you'll rectify yourself later. Yeah, start working on yourself now. Um, any questions, any thoughts, comments? Yes, please. Um, uh, can you hear me OK? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, please. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm not sure I completely understand <clears throat> what is meant by that which does not concern him, that you should not busy yourself with, with what does not concern you. Um, would you be able to expand upon that, what that means in its entirety? I'm I'm struggling with that. OK, that which does not concern. That in which there is no benefit, there is no benefit if by doing something, there is no benefit for myself or there is no benefit for anyone else, i.e. there is no good in it whatsoever. Yeah, if there is some benefit in it for myself and there is or there is some benefit in it for someone else or there is benefit, there is mutual benefit and it's good. And in reality, what do we mean by benefit? That is something which. Uh, which brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is something in which there is goodness in it, something which is enjoined, which the Prophet Sallallahu counseled us being either being good to others, being good to others, extending kindness to others is something which is good, which is which is required of us, which is which is how the Prophet Sallallahu taught us to be. That is good, but when there is no benefit, when there is no benefit, by doing whatever it is that we are doing, we are not really benefiting the other person. We are not benefiting ourselves. Then it's a matter which is which is better. We don't get involved in. There's a kind of. Does that kind of answer your question or uh, is there anyone else who would like to add anything? I think it was just the word um, concern that was putting me off. Um, I didn't know if it was just talking about, you know, concerning yourself with other people's business, if that's what it was talking about. But I think it was just the word concern that was. Yeah, I think it's it, the translation in English, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, meaning in Arabic is. Something which does not is not of any relevance to you. It's not of any relevance to you. It's it's not something which is, yeah. The 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 it's yeah uh, yeah. The English translate the translation may not necessarily be the best because obviously it's you can't really translate everything which a language can raise into another language. But yeah yeah if the, yeah. That which does not concern him. I can I, I get where you're coming from, concern as in an English yeah, hum in Arabic. Yeah. But no, that's not what is meant here. The what's meant here is um engaging in activities that one 
in which there is no benefit either for the person themselves or for others. Yeah. <laughs> any other questions, any thoughts, any comments? Anything? Nassim, would you like to say something? Um, it's quite deep all this uh, for me to comprehend. Um, uh, I read a few pages, but my my book is a little bit different to this one. But the meanings is the same. Yeah. I think the word, um, you know, um, the part says the, the part that says withdrawal of God, the exalted from the worshipper, is his yeah. busying himself with what does mm. not concern him. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Um, no, that's okay. Yeah, the next bit. Um, if a, an hour of man's life slips by in other than that for which he was created in the way of worship, mm. then it's proper that his affliction is proactive. So the, the created in the way of worship, that little bit yeah. is... Yeah, what does that exactly mean? Does that mean... Well, yeah, See, just elaborate yeah. a little bit on that on that sentence, really. And so worship, worship is everything that a slave does, which is in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you are in worship of Allah subhanahu you are in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are in worship of him. Yeah, it does not necessarily mean formal worship. It does not necessarily mean formal worship. Everything that you do and you are, in obedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that means you are in worship of him subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. yeah. and 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 um and obviously there are different degrees that's that's the base but the more you're aware of him the more you're um in remembrance of him subhanahu wa ta'ala and um just go, going from the level of obedience to increasing in the in the levels of obedience and increasing in the rank in the levels of worship no no that's something which is uh, recommended and that which is encouraged but yeah at the very base is just being in a state of obedience that you're not doing anything which is contrary to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires from his slaves that in and of itself is worship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah the word obedience i think that sits sits with me a bit better Inshallah ta'ala. I think people are dropping like flies. <laughs> I think better to probably kind of um, stop here. But uh, how how far have we gotten? We just got two two pages, have we? <laughs> this way too long. Khair, inshallah ta'ala. We'll see how it goes. Sorry, Stad. All, all the books are the same because the one I've got, mine, I mean, the meaning is the same, more or less. Because okay. um, the the one that you're um, sharing with us, would you show the cover of that one, please? And then I, I'd rather have. Well, we've got one full in Arabic, and this one's Arabic and English. So I've got one full in English, and one okay. full in Arabic. But this cool. one, right? Okay, great stuff. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll cool. be purchasing this one. Okay, alhamdulillah. Any questions before we finish? Any thoughts or comments? Any thoughts or comments? Kausar, would you like to say anything? Um, no, I don't think so. Sorry, Sheikh. <laughs> okay, khair, inshallah. Muhammad, would you like to say something? Um, two pages with us, so much information in there. So, um, kind of, um, definitely need to listen again. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm, I'm relieved that I didn't have to read the Arabic. Alhamdulillah, it's all good. Don't try your watches. Um, Mubarak, would you like to say anything? Is there any final thoughts? Just just a final thought I had. Um, 
Yeah. Not something perhaps to be answered right now. I know we're running a bit late. Um, on, on the last part, when it says, whoever passes 40 without his virtual over overpowering his vice lane, you're ready for hellfire. Mm. What, what if you are, you know, approaching 40 or just passing 40 and you realize that you're that, that's, that's, overpowered that's, your vice? That's One of the things they say is, uh, this is actually a proof that um, the student who, who this letter was intended to, he was actually young. He was not. He hadn't crossed forty. Because if he had crossed forty, that's kind of like a point, pointless statement to make, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Obviously, there's context, and there's um, there's context to every admonition. And that particular statement is in the context of the reader being less than forty. Yeah. If if the reader is more than forty, then the context the the context is that. Um, the doors of mercy are always open. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his doors are always open. But at the same time, that does not absolve one from urgency in rectifying themselves. Yeah, because they don't know when their time will be up. Yeah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a person wakes up, he shouldn't, he shouldn't expect to go to sleep. And neither should a person going to sleep expect to wake up. Yeah, so... Yeah, that that statement. Yeah, so, um, they say this is actually a proof that the student was actually less than forty. Yeah, otherwise there would like there would be no point to <laughs> to including that. This, yeah? this is part of the hadith, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, obviously, but every yeah, hadith has its context yeah. as well, isn't it? Like, yeah. like there are hadith which are like general. There are hadith which are like like the old the, like the old man who came and asked if he could kiss his wife. The Prophet ﷺ, he said yes, and the young man, when he was fasting, and the young man was just gotten married, and the Prophet ﷺ said no. So obviously, there's there's con like there are hadith which are general, and there are hadith which are context specific, and that one definitely is in the context of someone who's young, isn't it? To say, well, you can't, you don't really wait for thing, you know, don't really think you'll set yourself right later, but like you need there's immediacy and urgency in setting ourselves right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, Gemma, do you have any questions, uh, any thoughts? No, thank you, Ustad. Thank you. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll finish it. Uh, we'll, we'll finish here for today, inshallah ta'ala. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وفقهنا إذا جهلنا وارزقنا علما نافعا وعملا متقبلا خالصا لوجهك الكريم وافتح علينا فتوح العارفين وعلحقنا بعبادك الصالحين وجعلنا من خدمة هذا الدين وجز الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما هو أهله وجزاكم الله كل خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله